Okay, and back to it. This time, something different, something really cool. So, this is the British Heavy Tank Mark V male from Meng Models. They, uh, it's not a model company I've worked with before on the channel, but Meng does tons of military kits, uh, car kits, uh, you name it. They, they're into everything. So, uh, the Mark V tank this is probably uh if you know anything about uh history or even you know if you've seen some world war one footage this is the uh like hallmark world war one tank you always see these things in world war one footage one of the first really mass deployed armored military vehicles in uh you know operational context in history so very interesting what drew me to this kit was not only is you know the, obviously the the Mark V tank, but full interior detail. So that's really unique. I have not seen any other uh, World War One tank kits that have the full interior. Also, this was done. The interior was was scanned and done to scale from an actual remaining Mark V tank at the Bovington Tank Museum in England, which if you're not familiar with tanks, so I'll, I'll show you some of my uh, <laughs> my tank uh, history, uh, uh, you know, love here for a moment. Uh, the Bovington Tank Museum in England is uh, considered one of the uh, foremost uh, armored vehicle museums in the world. They have uh, an incredible assortment of vehicles. They have some of the only uh, actual running examples of some vehicles. Uh, they have a running Tiger One, which I, I believe uh, there is one other museum that is working to get a Tiger One running again, but Bovington has one. Uh, in fact, it was used for, uh, I believe it was used for some mock-ups in the movie Fury at, towards the end of the movie. The uh, exciting but very unrealistic uh, tank battle <laughs> between the, the Shermans and they encounter a tiger. Anyway, that aside, but this looks to be really unique. Uh, you know, came across this and got to build it. So uh, there's another channel called Rims Models. So I'll give uh, a little shout out to, to Rims there because uh, that was where I saw the build of this and became aware of the kit. And um, well, here we go. It's not easy to get a hold of one of these. Uh, from what it seems, the kit is is not, uh, you know, the run of the kit was, was completed. So I had to do a little searching online. Uh, my usual um, outlet for, or outlets for uh, armor kits, you know, uh, of this type, uh, Mega Hobby and Andy's Hobby Headquarters, neither of them had it. Uh, but I found a company called Sprue Brothers. Uh, and they happen to have some in stock. So here it is. Now, I'm gonna take the box away and we'll get a look at a very big pile of plastic. So now to give you an idea right off the bat, not only can you see here that the molds are excellent, but this gives you the dimension of the completed vehicle because the tracks run along the whole outside that's going to be the front edge. That will be the rear edge. So there's your length. Uh, the couple of, I mean, the um, barbette with the uh, side weaponry will fit on there. So that is very nice. And I'm hoping this will come out on the camera. But you can see here, all, it will focus close in. Because this is World War I, and this is one of the things I find interesting with World War I vehicles, uh, you know, it's almost like this uh, steampunk <laughs> aesthetic, you know, all bolts and rivets and plates and, you know, you look at something like this and you can see how they, you know, knock this thing together and, and built the vehicle. So, very nice. Now there is, a lot of stuff in this kit because it is an interior detail so as usual I'm not gonna spend uh, you know a terrible amount of time 
going through the sprues, but just so that you get an idea of how nice the kit is. This is the bottom. These are for the overrun of the tracks. But you can see, you know, even here, you know, some of these really finely molded pieces. This is the going to be the roof, the sorted hatches and whatnot. And because it is an interior detail kit, the underside of the roof is fully detailed with those rivets as well. Now, after I go through the parts, I will talk a little bit about my plan for this kit. Now, if you remember, or if you watched my build of the uh, Ryfield Panther with the full interior detail, okay, just to pause a minute, but here we have the engine parts in line six cylinder. Uh, you know, look at that. That's beautiful detail, all the push rods, uh, really nice stuff. The uh, interior, full interior uh, Ryfield Panther that I did, you know, that came with a special cutaway hull so that you could look inside. And I lit it up and everything to, to get, you know, that detail really uh, visible. So this is the frame for the engine carriage, you know, all these linkages, yeah, very fine pieces, very nice. Now, this kit does not come with a cutaway hull it is a solid hull but I do have a plan as to how I can open this thing up for display which I'll talk about in a minute now these are the tracks we get four sprues of track pieces like this and apparently from what I've read these just sort of click together you can see that we have these pins here very tiny and they would snap into the receivers of the succeeding link and pop, 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 all they go through and that will give you your tracks so we shall see and we have two sprues of this we have some weapons ammo belts there are two sprues of this again weaponry for the barbettes the turret ring that's really nice molded as it is there are if I remember correctly four sprues of these we have so, uh, two sprues I'm sorry the drive sprockets and this is what's the chain drive so you have <laughs> this tank driven by a chain to the drive sprocket I mean, that's crazy stuff and we do get four sprues of these all the little wheels for the uh, tread guide you know a lot of little stuff there we get this beautifully molded piece which I'm not going to take out because it's it's in there with they give you some chain you get some uh, poly caps I imagine probably for the main drive sprocket uh, and this is the engine shroud which is molded in one piece like that which is really neat we do get a little bit of photo etch and some decals I'm gonna leave this in the bag as well which basically is just the various marking choices so let's take a look at the instructions we do get a full color painting guide uh, for depending if you want to be you know again if you want to be super accurate and you know historically uh, you know uh, if you want to be really specific and historically accurate uh, these are the paint guides, so this will be 9th Battalion Tank Corps, British Army, France, 1918. Uh, the tank does not have, you know, a, a crazy camo scheme on it or anything like that. But, as you can see, it's a fairly simple painting scheme. Now, of course, you can go crazy and weather this thing to, to your heart's content. And, uh, you know, certainly with all those rivets and, and nuts and everything, you know, a vehicle out in the field, there'd be little, you know, rust collection and, and dirt, uh, dirt dribble and, and, and rust dribble and dirt collection around all those. And uh, you could really have a field day with that. I will not be doing my tank that way. I've said before, I'm not really into doing all the crazy weathering stuff, but I prefer to build this more as a museum example just like I did with the Panther. And I'm gonna show you a little bit of the instructions here. They do give you 
piece of flash. They do give you a little bit of history, fortunately, in English about the development of the tank, which is uh, really interesting, you know, especially if you don't know uh, some of the specifics about this. Uh, for those of you who are multilingual, and you know, we get other languages here, <laughs> even Russian. Okay, and there it is, the Bovington Tank Museum. It's on my uh, on my own personal bucket list to get there. Once a year they do tank day, which is when they, they bring out the running vehicles. They fire them up and, and drive them around. And there are videos of that on YouTube. You can check that out. Really, really neat. So, and now, like with any other kit, round up your pieces, do your assembly. And it looks like it's a pretty straightforward assembly. So we have the whole engine platform and frame goes right to the bottom armor the big cooling fan which these vehicles um, you know if you research these vehicles it was uh, beyond hellish inside these tanks you know you basically had an, an open engine in there that the shroud here you can build it down i'm gonna leave those side plates off to leave the engine open because as you can see it builds up to a very nice unit but in typical fashion at the time, most of the engine's mechanical elements were, you know, open. They weren't covered. Um, muffling, exhaust fume control was minimal at best. So these tanks would, would be you know, close to 100 degrees inside. You had the, the fumes from the, the engine running. You had the fumes from the, the shells and everything. You had the stench of people in there sweating. I believe this took a crew of uh, six or seven guys jammed into this thing. So very uncomfortable in there and noisy. Now here you can see the assembly of the side, which I want to point out because that's going to give a hint as to what I'm going to do to display this, my initial plan. So you can see the way the, um, let's just call them the um, the tread runs. I don't, I don't know what else to call it. But, you know, it's the whole side of the tank. And you build those. And then the whole side of the tank gets closed up and attached to the chassis. So I think that is a good reference point. And now we build the top of the vehicle all the assorted plumbing this is assembling the barbettes with their weaponry one and two and then they go on right and left and you have yourself a nice world war one tank model okay so my thinking was to display this if you're looking down at the top so this is the hull the tread run sits here if I put it on a plate, hinge the plate, mount the tank forward of the plate so that the hinge point is not the same axis as where the rear of the tread length meets the rear of the hull. That means as it opens up, the tread run will be moving also away from the bottom plate. So there's no risk of the rear of the tread run impinging on the hardware in the back of the tank. So opening it up like that, which means the tank would open up like this. And then I could have lights in the hull to light it up. I may look into a hinge or something to have the barbette open as well on that opening side. Because there is, obviously it's a full interior kit so there's a lot of detail in there. But even within the tread run, if we go back to that, you can see in here, there's the, the um, drive sprocket from the transmission, the chain drive, all the wheels, the uh, idler uh, gear up here. You have all that detail built in there and then it, it would end up getting sandwiched between these hull plates and basically that would be lost so unless there is a way to you know 
have it open. And that's why I said this diagram points to what I want to do. So I want to have this whole thing be able to swing open. And I may even leave off the entire inner armor piece so that you can see inside to uh, the sprocket assembly and all of that. I'll, I'll have to see that or I might go in with a rotary tool and make cutouts in there so you can see in there. In fact, I like that idea better already. All right, there we go. That's what I'll do. <laughs> so, the Meng British Heavy Tank Mark V male. Now, if you're wondering what the difference is in the nomenclature, male versus female, the male has the small uh, cannons on it. The female version was all uh, was fitted entirely with machine guns. So the male was intended for breaking up uh, small uh, fortified positions to uh, you know get at machine gun crews, mortar crews, things like that. Um, the shape of the tank was intended entirely for trench crossing. Uh, so that the tank didn't get mired in the trench. And this was to get the barbed wire up and guide it over the hull. That's what the framing is for. This uh, wood beam and you assemble this. These are trenching tools. This could be dropped in the trench to sort of as a midpoint when the tank goes over the gap. I think it could cross a three meter trench unaided. Uh, and this was to help give the tank traction in the beam if it got caught in mud. So, you know, a lot of nice detail on there. Now, when I was looking at this kit, I was looking at what else I have in stock and I realized I can do an overall theme. So this is a long range project and God knows when it, it will ever be done, but I'm gonna work on this one now. So this would be a World War I armored vehicle, full interior. I have in my stock full interior for the Grant Mark I, which is sort of, uh, this was a, it was a World War II tank, but it was developed in the period between World War I and World War II by uh, the United States. And you can see some of the heritage with all the bolts and everything, uh, the giant rivets and everything, uh, the small armaments that harken back to World War I, where the tank was viewed principally as a trench and infantry suppression vehicle rather than duking out armor to armor. And before Christmas, Andy's Hobby Headquarters had a sale on kits, a great sale, and I picked up a Ryfield Tiger I with full interior. So my thinking is I could have all three vehicles laid out in display, uh, armored development, early armored development, World War I to World War II, all full interior, be able to open them up, light them all up, and I think that would make a really interesting display. Like I said, God knows when I'll get to it. These kits take a lot of time to assemble. Um, having the built the Panther, I'm hoping, uh, not that I'm in a rush to build it, but I'm hoping uh, this will go a little bit faster because you know, a little more aware of what exactly it's like tinkering around inside the hull and working with the pieces, but I'm gonna do this guy first. Uh, you know, I'll probably do something else, then do this, something else, and then do that. So like I said, long range project. But in the meantime, gonna get to work. Okay, so I have a few pictures of the kit, a uh, few little bits of uh, maybe some history to give you that aspect of it, even though I talked about it, but you know, give you some pictures and whatnot. And then we will get into assembly. All right, so that's that. And off we go. Oh, by the way, if you enjoy the video, if you find the video of use, please do subscribe, like, share, all that good stuff. For those of you who already subscribed to the channel, thank you for um, you know giving me the, the encouragement to continue doing uh, these things and trying to push myself to do some uh, different things, maybe a little more elaborate things, uh, you know, with plans like this. So, hope you enjoy it. And like I said, here we go. All right, thank you.
Okay, so built a few things, got some work done. Didn't go uh, the way I usually do with the videos, as you obviously are aware of by now. But I thought with this uh, build video, and since I'm a little more comfortable working uh, while I actually record on the GoPro, um, I thought with this video I would do things a little bit differently and really try to show what it's like to build uh, one of these uh, interior kits, obviously not the entire build, but to really, uh, you know, give you a little bit more of an appreciation of how these things go together. Uh, you know, these kits are not for everyone because of the high parts count, but my thinking was to show you that um, parts count, whether it's one of these kits or whatever you're interested in building, Parts count in itself should not be, um, you know, something to turn you away from a kit. Obviously, with a higher parts count, there's a greater chance for detail in the kit. I've talked about that before. But uh, to actually, um, you know, in this case, show you what that looks like and, and how that comes together. And the other thing I, I wanted to show with this, um, you know, besides the detail, with kits like this, this kit in particular, which I found really interesting, uh, the way you are building this vehicle is actually quite similar to the way the actual vehicle was assembled. Uh, if you noticed, when I was assembling these uh, gun mounts for the sides of the tank, you know, the, where these panels come together, those seams fall along the actual rivet lines of the original tank. Um, and that's that's a pretty neat thing because you're building the tank the way, or obviously in a, a facsimile of the way the actual tank was built. So that's, that's a real nice learning experience. And while I'm on the subject of those gun mounts, give you an idea so how these will go so this is going to be the outer armor of the tank this is the ground this is the roof and these will well this one will sit on this side like so and then the gun will be mounted in there and sticking out so that's how that goes and the other thing I wanted to show is you can see here, even as a multi-piece assembly, just laying it on the side armor, how well that fits. So, good job by uh, Meng Models. But this brings up the uh, second point that I kind of wanted to illustrate by showing the build steps is sometimes uh, these like enthusiast kits, the from the uh, military model manufacturers in particular, uh, these kits with the higher part counts, you know, there, there, there is obviously a price tag that goes with it. Uh, this kit, I believe, I got for uh, roughly eighty dollars or so. So, you know, you're you're talking close to triple the cost of, let's say, your good old-fashioned one twenty-fourth scale car model, but. And, you know, I, I mean, this is no knock on the car models, but um, when you see how well these style of kits go together, the precision of the molding, you know, the, the pit, the, the pieces, they just fit together properly. Uh, you know, it really makes it a, a joy to build. And in this case, because you have the educational aspect of, you know, building in a, in a similar way that the, the vehicle itself was built, um, that really, I think, lends a level of appreciation so that when this is done and you're looking at it on your shelf, you know, if you ever get the opportunity to, to see the real thing, you'll look at it and, you know, you can recognize, oh, you know, the, the gun mounting and that's how this goes together and that's how that goes together. Um, we'll take a look at the engine now. This too, really beautiful assembly here. Uh, not as 
parts heavy, let's say, or parts intense as the uh, Ryfield Panther that I did. That was like 80 odd parts for, <laughs> for the engine alone, which is crazy. Uh, this was a much lower count, but you know, it is a simpler engine that they were using, you know, this straight six, um, you know, old, old technology motor here, but hey, it, it, it got the job done that I think uh, three miles was the top speed for this thing, <laughs> uh, three to five miles, but you know, it was built to move at a infantryman's pace, so it didn't necessarily need to go quickly, but in any event, um, very nice engine build. And I did not paint the clutch housing because this will be a separate assembly. I mean, a, a separate painting, which is why this piece is loose. Now, getting to the painting, obviously, I have not done any painting yet. And uh, what I was looking to do with this, uh, the, the Ryfield Panther in, in comparison, I painted as I built. So I do some assemblies and I would paint it. Uh, because this is not as complex a vehicle in terms of its its inner workings as the Panther, uh, my thinking with this is to do a, a bunch of assembly and then I'm just going to paint the uh, the, the sub assemblies and then you know do like a, a fabrication phase where I put the kit together. Um, part of the thinking there too is I have to run lighting. Now this is the going to be the floor of the tank and that will mount sort of like that yes there we go that will mount roughly like so so um, there we go this will mount roughly like so now the lighting I am not going to run along the floor I'm going to run along the roof but uh, aside from the engine, the driver's compartment will go there. There's a big air unit in the back. Um, I will build in accordance with what I will need to do for the painting. Also, I will build uh, for the lighting. I will build also uh, with regard to having this on the base so that it opens up to reveal the inside workings. Now, I am toying with the idea of having a gun mount. This is the gun mount that would go with this side. Also, fabricating some kind of a hinge or whatnot. Maybe that can open up too. We'll see. Might be getting a little uh, too creative here with it. <laughs> but that's where it's at right now. Now, you saw all the wheel assemblies. These are all the axles for those wheels. They will all drop in there and then the track goes all the way around. So, uh, you know, that was a somewhat uh, repetitive, tedious step. But while I was at it, I just figured let me do it and get it done. So it's done. Uh, the tracks went together one, two, three. Uh, if there's a highlight so far in terms of ease of assembly with this kit, it will be those tracks. If you remember with the Ryfield Panther, I, had to put all the little track pins in there and, and glue it up and it was very fragile. Uh, this as well is fragile, but you know, being able to click the links, the track links together, it was, it was almost like working with uh, Lego, <laughs> you know, very, very well designed. And um, that was the uh, last point I wanted to make before wrapping up this episode of the build, which is uh, getting back to the, the, the price point issue. So, yes, it's almost three times the cost of a car model. Uh, part of that is the parts count and everything, but, uh, you know, a, a decent amount of that is this build experience that you get with one of these. The quality moldings, the precision of the fits, you know, the, the, the final uh, assembly with, with all the detail. Um, I mean, again, you know, you just look at this gun mounting, and this again was not a terrible amount of parts but you know that's that's a really nice looking representation of the gun so uh you, you there's no way to get around that let's say other than by having the parts count and 
the price that goes with it. Um, you know, and in terms of modern tooling, uh, you know, not, not to pick on AMT, but, you know, they use a lot of old uh, tool sets. They, they retool, you know, they reissue models. Uh, you know, at a lower price point, this would probably be molded as one big piece. And when you go to put it on the side of the vehicle, it would probably be um, not all that great a fit. <laughs> Let's just say that. But here, building out of multiple pieces... And you saw when I did the assembly, you know, they, they pretty well lined up um, and it's, it's set, you know, there it is. And to give you an idea how this is going to look with the inside armor, I mean the inside wheels, that will sit in there kind of like so. So I really look forward to actually seeing that bill because that just looks so neat. Okay. So, that's that. So, I'm going to replicate a lot of, the, uh, you know, the, the assemblies, the, the other uh, large weapon mount. I got to do that. Uh, there's going to be some other assembly I, I have to do. Uh, but all that and then the painting uh, will be the second episode. I don't know if I'll be able to wrap this up in two. I will probably go into a third because uh, when I do the base, I really want to show how that goes so you can see uh, there as well that with uh, a little bit of material and a little bit of you know common tools how uh, you can put stuff to work so um, you know when I did the VW Samba bus and I used some uh, dollhouse uh, miniatures not miniature people but you know miniatures to, to add to the detail of the uh, bus uh, you know one of the things I said in there is you know don't rule some other craft or tool or resource or something that you do from using it with your your scale model hobby you know if you have something and it works and you know you're, you're comfortable doing it and you can find a way to blend that that skill and experience into something you're doing with a model kit by all means go for it this doesn't have to be you know building kits doesn't have to be a, an exclusive boxed in thing no pun intended that um rules out you using other skills that you have so be resourceful yes now i do apologize this uh episode is coming out later than i had anticipated but uh, i was preoccupied with doing some of my book stuff and uh, my wife and i had our 30th anniversary so yay us and we took a little vacation to uh celebrate that and enjoy ourselves in a little bit of a warmer climate than uh, frosty New York. So, but now uh, back to work. So, um, hope you enjoyed a little bit of a different approach with the build in this one. Uh, next one, going to go back to a little bit more of what I usually do to speed up the process on the video and uh, get this project moving along. So, as always, thank you for watching. Please like, share, subscribe, uh, you know, if it was of help to you and I, that makes me happy and certainly I hope it can be of help to other people as well and the more people that get involved in this fantastic hobby, the more people I think will uh, be happy with what they can build. So that's it for part one. I will be back with a part two and... We'll have some color and stuff going into that. All right. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Until the next one. <laughs> As I like to say, enjoy your hobby. All right. <laughs> okay.